So fundamental theorem of arithmetic, it states that every composite number, okay, so let's understand what is prime and what is composite. Prime number p is a number which is greater than 1, okay, so 1 is not included. 1 is neither prime nor composite, so 1 is not included. Prime number p is a number greater than 1, which is which has only two numbers as its factors, either number itself or one. Okay, so prime number p is a number greater than one, which has only two factors, the number itself and one. Another definition is prime number p is a number greater than one, which cannot be written as product of some other numbers. Okay, that is the other uh, other than one and itself. Okay, so if I have to write the number p as a product of a number other than one and itself, okay, if I, I have to write it this way and I cannot, then that number would be prime. Of course, prime is greater than, it's always a number bigger than one. So those are the two definitions. The idea is simple, prime number has no factors other than one and itself in either case. Now, to understand the theorem, we are saying that every composite number, for example, let's take a number six, every composite number, let's say number six, number six is not really a prime number, so let's take that. It can be written, it can be written as a product of primes, which is true, I can write three, six as three into two, three and two are both prime numbers. And this factorization is unique. The way of writing this 6 is unique. See, I can change the order of these factors. I can write, instead of writing 6 as 3 into 2, I can write it as 2 into 3. But it means one and the same thing. The factors, the underlying factors which make the number are exactly the same. They are indeed the same. They are 3 and 2. They are both there in 6. And they are. that is the only way I can express 6. If I have to write express 6 in the form of prime factors, this is the only way I can write it. There are only 2 and only 2 prime factors, 3 and 2. It is a unique signature. And this is unique to this. Every number has this unique signature. That is what the definition of this fundamental theorem of arithmetic is. It is very powerful theorem, very important theorem. It's very important to understand it. It is not a given, right? You understand, right? That, that all numbers, let's say any, take any, any number, any large number, 1, 2, 6, 8, 9, 7. It is not a given that this particular number can be expressed as a product of primes. Okay, It is not a given, but this theorem gives us that power that yes, indeed, it is factorizable. Every number is factorizable as product of primes and that factorization is unique. Okay, If we ignore the order, don't look at the order, that factorization is unique. Of course, then applications are there of this number. We are needed. We are required to find the find, uh, prime factors. We can use the division method. We can use the factor three method. The, the, either of those is uh, uh, okay. LCM and SCF will be required to find. Okay, we can use the prime factorization to find LCM and SCF. SCF. We can also use our uh, Euclid's algorithm to find the SCF. And of course, one important theorem on which you will be asked to uh, find. Uh, do problems, solve problems is this SCF into LCM of two numbers is equal to the product of those two numbers. Okay, so if I find the LCM of two numbers A and B and I find their HCF of A into B, sorry, A comma B, then indeed that is equal to this product is equal to the product of the two numbers itself. It's very the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we continue it that way. And then uh, we come on to this important theorem, which is again very, very important because problems would be asked based on this theorem. What does it say? It says that if a number P is a prime and P divides A square, okay, so number P is prime and it divides A square. What does that really mean? Let's say that my number A consists of, from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, I can write that I can always write the number P as products of primes. So I'm writing it as product of prime. Okay. And of course, there will be certain powers, right? I can express it as certain powers of prime. What does this mean? It means that A square would again consist of only these prime factors, A1, P2, P3. No new prime factors have been created in A square, right? Whatever prime factors were there already in A, A square would inherit it. A cube would also inherit it, okay? There are no new prime factors which can be created, okay? It is intrinsic. A has certain prime factors. A square would have the same uh, number of uh, same prime factors, okay? Their, their quantity might change, okay? But the, it cannot create any new prime factors, okay? If, there are, if the prime factor is missing in A, then it cannot suddenly appear in A square. So that, what does that mean? It means that if the number P were to divide this A square, which means that P exists here in P1, P2, P3, it exists here already, okay? Which means, it means that this, if P can divide A square, it means that it, it exists here, right? It exists in, as one of the terms here, P1, P2, and P3. What does that mean? It means that because it exists in A square, this number P also exists, also must exist, exist as a factor of A. And therefore, I can write A as P into C, bringing out the factor. This is what this theorem is saying. Again, very, very powerful theorem.